Nomenclature. Names and formulas of chemical compounds. The first thing you need to do to master nomenclature is to learn the difference between the metals and the nonmetals when you look at a periodic table. The first kind of compound we'll consider is a binary molecular compound. This is made from two nonmetal atoms, which happen to be neutrally charged. Atoms in a molecule will share electrons to form covalent bonds. Their formulas are unpredictable. Nitrogen and oxygen, for example, can bond together many different ways. When you have a compound of NO2, what we'll do is we'll name that molecule with prefixes to show how many atoms are present. These prefixes from 1 to 10 on the right side are the Greek prefixes for the numbers. So we would use, for instance, a prefix to show that there are two oxygens. We won't call NO2 nitrogen oxide. We would call it nitrogen dioxide. Notice the name of the anion oxygen was changed to oxide. Cations are not changed. However, it could be the case that there's more than one charge for a possible cation. Look at this periodic table and you can see that the transition elements in the middle often have more than one charge. If that's the case, we'll use the Roman number to designate its name. For instance, the manganese plus two ion would be called manganese Roman number two. The manganese plus four would be called the manganese Roman number four. The Roman number tells us the oxidation charge. Um, in this chart, notice it puts tin and lead as plus two. We would expect them to be plus four. Keep in mind they could be plus two or plus four. We would use a Roman number to tell them apart. The next kind of compound is called a binary ionic compound. These are made from two oppositely charged ions, the first almost always being a metal, the second being a nonmetal. For example, if I had a formula of FeI3, I could immediately identify this as ionic because iron is a metal, iodine is a nonmetal. Whenever you're writing a compound, put the cation or metal first, the anion or nonmetal second. Make sure you balance the formula by finding the lowest common multiple of the ion charges so that they add up to zero. Ionic compounds must be neutral. It's incorrect to say this compound would be iron triiodide. Rather, we would call it iron iodide. But wait, since iron has more than one charge, we could tell that since iodide is a minus one charge, the iron must be plus three. This should be correctly called iron Roman number three iodide. Let's compare these two types of compounds again. The molecular compounds have two or more neutral nonmetal atoms. These are small molecules invisible to the eye and we will use numeric prefixes to determine their names and formulas. Ionic compounds, by contrast, are made out of cations, usually metal, anions, nonmetal. These are large crystals that are so large we can see them, like in the case of most rocks. And we find their formula by balancing charges to make them equal zero. It's time for you to practice a few simple binary compounds. So they'll try the set of three, Pause the video, check your answers, and then try the next set of three. All right, did you get your answers correct? Now try the next set. Were you able to get your answers correct? Let's go a little deeper now. There's one category of molecules that deserves its own naming system. These are the hydrocarbons, which always are made out of carbon and hydrogen atoms. For example, C8H18. It might be tempting to call it octocarbon to something hydrogen, but that's not how it's done. These are the alkane molecules. They're the simplest hydrocarbon molecules. They contain only single bonds. Their name always ends in ane and always starts with a prefix that designates the number of carbon atoms in the molecule. So look at this list and memorize this list. Notice that the number of carbons from 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10, these are the same as the Greek prefixes. But the number of carbon atoms for 1, 2, 3, and 4 are different. They have followed the general formula of CxH2x plus 2. Look at the compound below. There's four carbons. Four means bute prefix. We'll call this butane. You can tell that there are four bonds to each carbon, two per carbon plus an extra two hydrogens on the very end. So that's why the formula would be twice the number of hydrogens 
as carbons, plus two additional ones. Let's look at another class of the ionic compounds with polyatomic anions. Monatomic ions ended in ide and consist of one atom, like sulfide. Polyatomic ions generally end in eight or ite, and they consist of several atoms. For instance, sulfate contains one sulfur but four oxygens. Nitrate, one nitrogen, three oxygens. And then there's hydroxide. It's polyatomic even though it ends with the IDE ending. Let's look at a couple of examples. If I wanted to make a formula of lead Roman number two hydroxide, that formula would consist of one lead atom with a plus two charge balanced with two hydroxide ions with a minus one charge each. I'll use parentheses around the hydroxide formula so that I can show I have two hydroxides. Notice that the lowest common multiple is two. So there are two negative charges to, kept to balance with the positive two lead ion. Let's look at one a little more complicated. Aluminum sulfate has two aluminums that are plus three each, balancing with three sulfates that are minus two each. Now keep in mind, this is not what aluminum sulfate would really look like, but this gives us an idea of how we would go about balancing the compound. It's going to be necessary for you to memorize these ten polyatomic ions, and it's kind of tricky. The first four, well, they almost make sense. The second set, number five through ten, take a little bit of work because they all end with the ATE, the eight ending, and it gets a little tricky. So look at this next picture. On the periodic table, we can see that boron, carbon, and nitrogen are on the top row. Below nitrogen is phosphorus, sulfur, and chlorine. The six ions we have to memorize are called borate, carbonate, nitrate, phosphate, sulfate, chlorate. It's hard to remember them individually, but as a set, it works. Remember the oxygen pattern from boron down to chlorine, 333-443. That's the pattern of the oxygens. And look at the charge pattern from boron down to chlorine, 321-321. I hope that helps you memorize this set a little better. There are more ions in this just this set. You can look up the other ions from the textbook, but keep in mind that the ions immediately below the six that you memorize are going to follow the same pattern. So for exa example, bromate containing the bromine atom would look just like chlorate, which it's immediately below. Now let's consider variations in the number of oxygen ions in some of these molecules. We've memorized chloride and chlorate. Chloride is a monatomic ion. Chlorate is a polyatomic ion, but they're not the only possibilities. Wow, look at this chart. If we've memorized chlorate as ClO3, and then we come across something that has one additional oxygen atom, we're going to use the per prefix. Per chlorate would have one more oxygen than we're used to seeing. Likewise, if we memorize chlorate as ClO3, but come across something that's missing an oxygen, we'll change the name from ate to ite. The ite ending, chlorite, indicates we're missing one oxygen. If we're missing two oxygens from what we would normally expect, its name changes to hypochlorite. Acids are compounds where the cation is the hydrogen ion and these get a different naming system as well. For example, acids that contain chlorine. The HCl is a binary compound. You could call it hydrogen chloride, but it's more traditionally known as hydrochloric acid. Likewise, the HClO3, you could call it hydrogen chlorate, but it's traditionally known as chloric acid. Notice if it has an ide ending, we put in the hydro prefix and the ic ending. If it has an eight prefix, we skip the hydro. Now look at variations of this. The rules are the same, almost. If it's chloric acid, but it has one extra oxygen, we call it perchloric acid. If it's chloric acid, but it's missing one oxygen, we call it chlorous acid, where us takes the place of the ite. And if we're missing two oxygens, it's hypochlorous acid. 
it's time for you to practice again. Let's take these nine ionic compounds and see if you can write their correct names. How did you do? I want you to notice that the only thing that gets Roman numbers are the ions where it could have more than one charge. So we would not use Roman numbers for sodium or potassium or anything like that. I also want you to notice that when it comes to things like iodate and iodite, the number of oxygens changes, but the charge of the ion does not. It will consistently remain negative one as long as it's IO anything. Let's try a few more. I'm going to give you these nine names and see if you can write formulas of these nine compounds. Give it a shot. How did you do? Notice in the case of the copper cyanides that you had to determine the charge of the copper ions. Some people mistakenly think that copper Roman number two means there's two coppers. That's not correct. It means the copper is plus two. Let's summarize our rules. Imagine we have a flow chart that looks like this, and we have these four compounds at the very bottom that we want to name. We can figure out their names simply by remembering what they're made out of. In the case of CO2, I say, hey, there's two nonmetal atoms. That means I'm going to use prefixes, and I'm going to name it carbon dioxide. In this case of Na2O, I recognize its metal-nonmetal combination. And when it's metal-nonmetal combination, I don't worry about prefixes. I just make sure the ion charge balances. Since sodium is plus one and oxygen is minus two, that means I need two sodiums to balance with one oxygen. In the case of HBr, since it starts with H, I recognize that it's an acid. And since there's only two elements, it's a binary acid. Its name would be hydrobromic acid. And in the last case, CH4, it's two nonmetals, and I recognize that that's a hydrocarbon. Being a hydrocarbon, I'll name it after the number of carbons. One carbon means methane. Methane. Let's try it again. Here's five compounds that are a mixture of all the rules we've covered. See if you can name these compounds. Go. Okay, how did you do? Here's four more compounds that have names. Let's see if you can write their balance formulas. And here are our answers. Remember, you can go to your textbook to find more rules if you don't have enough information to help you with this. Naming is tricky. It takes practice, but keep up the good work.